A lot of folks out there, their investments have been limited to their employer-sponsored 401k or the stock market. My client, he's got $55,000 he'd like to diversify. He wants to put that into rental real estate. Dan from Ohio, this is your video. Let's dive in. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. Gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. What we are going to do on this show is show you how to get the cash flow. By the way, if you like this t-shirt, in the show notes below, there's a link to purchase one for yourself or a friend or family member. Go ahead and use promo code HWTV10 for 10% off. Today, we are talking about getting cash flow for my client, Dan. Dan, he has invested in the stock market thus far. He's never pulled the trigger on a real estate investment, but that's what he wants to do. He's got $55,000 in cash. He is pre-approved through a lender, which is incredibly smart, guys. That's what's so great about real estate. If you have $55,000 in cash and you want to invest in the stock market, well, guess how much stock you can buy. You can buy $55,000 worth of stock. However, with real estate, you can quadruple that if you get yourself a residential lender. So my guy, Dan, he can go ahead and buy $220,000 worth of real estate. He's not limited to just $55,000. As far as the two properties he's looking into, he's looking at multifamily. He wants to stay in between the $50,000 and $150,000 range for each of the properties. So depending on what we find for him, he's going to either buy one or two investments he's down with section 8 but he doesn't necessarily have to get section 8 but he is open to that um, based upon my conversations with him I wanted to find him something kind of low risk right this is the first time he's entered into the real estate market so I didn't want to find him something like super high risk where section 8 would be incredibly necessary so what I did is I found him two properties in B class neighborhoods and his main goal was to just supplement his current income, get that diversification, and he wanted to make sure the money he is putting into these deals, he's getting a cash-on-cash cash return of at least 7%. And not one, but both of those properties, they fit the bill for that. As a matter of fact, both of those properties should, in my opinion, give him an average annualized return of above 10% on his cash. So... Without further ado, let's jump into the first property that I have found for you, Dan. 8331 Garfield Boulevard, Garfield Heights, 44125. This is a duplex that is listed by a company called LLP Management. Let's just cruise through the photos for you. What are we doing there? All right, here we go. We got the front. <clears throat> This unit right here, this particular unit was just updated. As you can see, we got a pretty modern looking kitchen. This is what I like to see, guys. This is what tenants like. They like white cabinets. This right here, a little rental tip for you guys. This is just a nice modern countertop. That's like a standard like off-the-shelf Home Depot or Lowe's type product, right? You know, in a rental property like this, you know, you're 
you're not renting these for like a ton of money. You know, this particular unit is renting for $720 a month. So you don't need to go granite or quartz necessarily. If you wanted to, you could. But a lot of times folks are saving some money picking up one of those products. And it still looks pretty good. You got the modern vinyl floor. You got neutral paint. And, of course, the white trim. That's what tenants want to see. Black appliances is another good one. I like folks getting black appliances. I know a lot of people immediately immediately are like, oh, we got to go stainless steel. Stainless steel is really great. I love stainless steel. I'm never going to tell somebody not to go stainless steel, but sometimes when you're in rentals uh, that are on the little bit lower end of the rental spectrum, like this is still high quality. I, I dig the neighborhood, but you know, this isn't a $1,300 single family home. Um, so we're on the lower end of the spectrum. We're going to anticipate a higher level of turnover because it's multifamily. So what I'm getting at is if the landlord is going to provide appliances, sometimes black appliances can be nice when there's multiple turnovers because they seem to get less dings and obvious scratches on them. So just a little something that can help you guys out if you are providing appliances for your tenants. Now, you don't have to. We rent the majority of our duplexes in the Cleveland market without appliances. But in this particular case, the photos, right, the photos that we were given by the listing agent, they include appliances before we actually placed a tenant in there, right? They renovated the unit. They took pictures of the unit when it was empty. So you as the owner of this property, if you were to buy this, Dan, you are now a landlord who did provide appliances to his tenant because it was in there before the tenant was. So if you're going to do that, a black appliance might not be a bad move. Now let's talk numbers, man. Let's get into the numbers on this. As far as the rent roll... The upstairs unit is being rented at $720 a month. The downstairs is being rented at $635. That is $1,355 a month or $16,260 a year. As far as the price, it is listed for $80,000. Now, when you're looking at the MLS right here, this DOM, okay, DOM, what that stands for, days on market, 149 days on the market. So this particular property has been listed for quite a while. And the reason being, they listed it for the wrong price. When they originally listed this property, they started at $100,000. I think that's too high for this property. Now that it is priced at $80,000, I think that is a perfect price point, And I think this is going to be a hell of a deal. Let me read what the agent wrote um, for you because the, the way they did the rents is a little goofy too. I want to explain that. Perfect opportunity to start your portfolio or add to it. Upstairs unit includes an updated kitchen, eat-in area, and stove. Upstairs rented with new lease starting on August 30th. Rented for $645 with additional $75 toward water and sewer. Downstairs is rented for $635 with the lease ending in April of next year. Features include vinyl windows, glass block windows, aluminum siding, newer hot water tanks. Now, what I want to talk about, right? I, when I told you the rent, it's 720 for that unit. If you guys are out there self-managing your properties, this is a pro tip for you guys. Make it freaking simple. Like, I, I don't understand why you would... If you're going to rent it for 720 just say the rent's 720 Here they said the rent's 645 with 75 towards water and sewer. 645 plus 75 that's 720 Just keep things simple. I don't know why you would itemize your rental amount. You don't want to be like, the rent's this, plus this fee, plus this fee. Guys, six to one, half a dozen to the other. Keep it simple. I know there's some folks out there that are like trying to sell programs or webinars or whatever, trying to tell folks that, oh, instead of saying your rent is this amount, you could say your rent's lower, and then you add in all these fees. Guys, your tenant base, they're going to understand it. They're going to see through all that stuff, guys. The amount of money the tenant has to pay you every month to live in this property is $720. So if you're out there, don't try to make things super confusing, okay? Just keep it simple. $720 is the rental amount. Another thing, too, when people are coming up with all those crazy schemes to try to squeeze out a couple bucks and they're trying to outsmart the market or something, try taking that stuff into the courtroom during eviction proceedings, guys. Then you run into just like a whole litany of issues. The judge is going to start picking through your lease. Not everything you guys put in these leases, by the way, just because you put it in a lease does not mean that the judge is going to honor it, okay? 
there is specific landlord tenant uh, laws, rules, rights, you know, that everybody gets, right? You can't make a contract that gives away your rights. Like for me, right? I cannot draw up a written contract right now that gives Tommy the ability or the permission to kill me, right? As an American, he's not allowed to kill anyone. I can't give away those rights. Same thing with these leases. So when you guys are putting in all these funky terms that might not necessarily be enforceable, because uh, you heard it on a show or a webinar or somebody's selling a book or whatever, you, you got to think, man, what's this going to be like in the courtroom? Are they going to uphold this? And then you run into the fact if one part of your lease is found unenforceable, are they going to throw out your whole lease? Just a whole big mess. And that kind of stuff can be prevented if you keep things simple. So if you want your tenant to pay you $720 in rent, guys, well, guess what? You need to draw up a lease that says the rent is $720. Now, of... That seven twenty plus that six thirty five. That's thirteen fifty five. You're going to be bringing in a month. How much are you going to spend to operate this bad boy? Well, repairs and maintenance. We're going to estimate you're going to spend eight oh four a year or sixty seven a month. Same thing with our vacancy slash non payment of rent and our capital expenditures. Now we got glass block windows. We got vinyl windows. We got newer hot water tanks. That's great. But what does that mean? It means she didn't mention that we got newer furnaces. So, of course, our furnaces are going to be older in this particular property. That's okay for the price point that we're going to be offering. I think that's totally fine. Furnaces, they're going to last you approximately 30 years. Dan, you're going to spend approximately $3,000 replacing those. Now, if you end up wanting to make an offer on this particular property after you watch this show, just because you got this analysis, that does not mean you're going to make that offer without getting a third-party home inspection. You're going to get that third-party home, third home inspection. Your inspector, he's going to look through everything, and I'm going to guess what he's going to say about both your furnaces is they are past their useful life expectancy. I recommend you have an HVAC technician look into them further. You don't actually have to have an HVAC tech look into them further. That's kind of like a boiler plate response you're going to get from any home inspector when you get an old furnace like that. Here's the deal. If the furnaces go down, you're not spending a few hundred bucks on service calls because it is past its useful life. What you need to do is pony up the dough and get yourself a new furnace because your furnace is old. I'm telling you that right now. You're going to ride them out till till they break. As soon as they break, as soon as you have first issue, as soon as the first service call comes out, replacement. Then you got a new furnace. It's going to last you approximately 30 years. It's going to be three grand. Then you got to spend another three grand on the other one. That's why we budget 804 a year for capital expenditures. Because I don't know if that's going to happen next month, the month after, two years from now, four years from now, six years from now. Things like that are going to happen. You got to budget for it. That's why we're budgeting that CapEx and that money, that 804. You might not have to spend any of that over the next three years. So that's like, uh, what is that? Eight, six, that's 2400 bucks. We're not going to calculate that as part of your return in this video, though, because you're saving up for that because you know that coming in the near future, you got six Gs you're going to have to spend on new furnaces, man. As far as the taxes, two sixty four a month. Insurance should be about 80 bucks a month to insure this. Click the show notes below. I've got a link to my insurance company. We can provide you a quote or anybody else who's watching this out there. If you are a landlord, you own rental property anywhere in the United States of America, click that link and we will provide you a quote for insurance on your rental properties our whole gimmick with our our uh, our insurance company we're investors we only deal with investors and we only try to get you guys the lowest possible premiums so if you want to try to lower that premium we are the guys for you we shop it around to all kinds of different third-party insurance providers and we'll get you guys the best landlord rates that's all we do that's all we specialize in we don't do the owner occupied stuff really we don't insure like the family freaking station wagon or boat or suv or whatever the hell it is right we're a real estate investment company. We only deal with investors. And I know investors, man, you guys just want the ROI to be higher. So that's that's what our business is all about. So click the show notes below. We can insure anybody's property. Uh, we are licensed in almost all 50 of the states right now. By the time you watch this, we'll probably have already got our license in all 50 of the states. So wherever you guys are at, click it. Water sewer estimate, 150. That's tough, man. It's a tough one to estimate. It can go up, it can go down based upon your tenant's usage. But that's, you know, running a $50 million portfolio. That's a good average. 
Lawn care, 44 bucks a month. It's going to cost you a total of 528 a year. Holt Wise, multifamily property. We're going to charge you like 33, 34 bucks uh, per cut. We're going to cut it like 16, 18 times. Dan, you're from Ohio. You know, you know Cleveland weather, right? Uh, some of you guys out there are in Vegas, right? And you don't understand just how often we really need to cut the grass here in the Cleveland market during the spring and the summer. Uh, but then, of course, in the winter, we don't have to cut it at all. So should run you at 44 a month on average. Then my favorite expense, the property management expense. You got to pay the guy. James Wise needs cash flow too, guys. 135 a month. Total expenses on average. What I anticipate you spending, 874 a month. Should leave you with an NOI, 481 a year, or 5,772, or I'm sorry, 481 a month, or 5,772 a year if you paid cash. But Dan, you don't want to pay cash, bro. You want to finance this. That was the point, right? So if you bought it at 80, <clears throat> right, your mortgage down payment would be $20,000. You'd have a mortgage amount of 60000 you have a small, small, tiny, tiny mortgage payment, man, 304 a month. That would leave you with an average net cash flow after you pay off that mortgage of 177 a month or 2124 a year. You only had to put 20 Gs into the project, so that's a cash-on-cash cash return of 10.62% or a cap rate of 7.2, which beats your goal of a cash-on-cash cash return of 7%. Now, one other thing I want to mention before I start talking about our strategy of like what we want to bid on this. Garfield Heights is a point of sale city. What that means for anybody who does not know, the city requires their inspectors to come out and inspect every property that they sell and then they issue violations. Either the seller has to clear off all violations before the property could transfer or the buyer has to assume those. They have to put money in escrow. Then they have to fix the repairs. Then they have to get the city back out there. The city will approve all the repairs. Then and only then will they release the original escrow funds to you, the buyer. Now, in this particular case, the seller... The agent, they have not included a point of sale report. They haven't mentioned the point of sale report. Nothing about the point of sale report has been said or mentioned in any of the materials. What this leads me to believe is they have not ordered it yet. Sometimes sellers, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, right? The agent, uh, you know, maybe they don't work in POS cities all that much, or maybe their sellers is difficult. I don't know why they wouldn't have ordered it. It makes no sense from a strategic standpoint, but it happens quite a bit. Um, so there is no point of sale ordered at this moment in time. My opinion on a strategy for you, Dan, I think the seller is getting pretty damn motivated to sell this. Uh, the agent actually notated that we have a motivated seller on our hands. That's, you know, one clue. Another clue, they dropped the price quite a bit, man. They were at 100000 and then they knocked that sucker down to $80,000. $20,000 is 20%. That's a pretty big tr pr price drop right there. They've been on the market. 149 days, man, that is a long time. I'm assuming that seller is ready to go, 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 go. So what I would do here, and oh, another thing too that makes this strategy good, the particular uh, real estate agent that's man or, uh, listing this property is working at a company called IIP Management, okay? They're a property management company. So this that's good for our strategy. What I suggest we do, we come in and we offer in the low 70s. I say we start things out at 72, 73, with our ultimate goal being to close around 75,000 and having the sellers provide you a completely clear point of sale inspection report prior to title transfer so you don't have to spend any additional money on repairs. You can just make that cash flow from day one. The fact that they're motivated... I think they'll be willing to play ball with us. You know, they dropped that price quite a bit. It's been listed for a long time. And the fact that the particular listing agent that they are working with also works at a property management company means that seller has the means to actually get the repairs done. See, a lot of times you might be dealing with sellers that maybe they don't have any money to clear off their POS reports, or maybe they have the money, but they just like don't have the time or ability to actually get contractors out there and do that stuff. So like they'll sell like, hey, we're not touching the property. You got to take it as is. You got to deal with all that, right? That happens quite a bit. You know, like sometimes the city, you know, they want driveways done. They want this or that. You know, they give you a laundry list of crap they want done. Not every seller... Uh, 
is able to just go out and hire those types of contractors, guys. Hiring contractors, it's not like uh, you need to buy shoes for your kid, right? And you just, you know, go to the store or go on Amazon or whatever and you point them and you grab them, right? It's, it's a totally different ball game dealing with contractors. Um, so not everybody can do it. But in this particular situation, I believe our seller can because their realtor works at a company that does that kind of stuff. So that's going to play in to your goals. You didn't want to spend very much up front. You only want to do minor stuff. Or if you can get somebody that was in there already rented, just start making that cash flow so we can stretch out your cash and maybe get you the second property as well. So that's what I want to do, man. 72, 73,000 is where we should start. Ask for a clear point of sale inspection report at closing and of course we're going to make this contingent on your financing so it's going to be contingent on appraisal and of course contingent on a third party inspection now let's go to a word from the sponsor of today's show and then i'm going to get into the second property i found for you discount property warehouse founded by real estate visionary robert feel author of the short-term retirement program is a complete turnkey solution for acquiring cash flowing investment properties in memphis tennessee our turnkey properties include a third-party home inspection, new HVAC with 10-year warranties, new dimensional roofs, competitive price to rent ratios, discounted property insurance, in-house property management, private financing, and much more. At Discount Property Warehouse, we have a staff of licensed agents standing by, ready to assist you with every aspect of the process. Call us today or visit us online at discountpropertywarehouse.com. Holt & Wise has a worldwide audience of real estate investors. If you are a lender, home inspector, or anyone else with a real estate related business who would like to increase your sales and exposure with an ad in one of our videos, go to HoltonWise.com today. All right, Dan, welcome back. Let's jump right into the second property that I have found for you. 3234 Euclid Heights Boulevard, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, 44118. This is a duplex listed by another property management company called Fast Management. That is good. That's going to come into play. Let's pull up the photos. This duplex is listed at $94,000. All right, this duplex, this is a beast. This is a big, big monster of a building. One unit's got five bedrooms. The other one has three. Cruising through the photos, they did like a very, very minimal quality, you know, renovation here. You could tell that the particular seller was looking to go on a budget when they did this. You'll see this a lot um, from landlords that are really looking to spend the lowest amount of money. They carpeted it, right, instead of uh, pulling up the carpet and refinishing the hardwoods. That's one hint that they wanted to get things done as cheaply as possible. The second is the wall color and the trim were painted the exact same color. They just took the exact same paint, just slapped it all over there. They didn't take uh, effort into actually painting the walls one color with the trim another color. Uh, when you're a landlord, unless you're buying like super low income stuff, I don't really recommend doing that. Maybe if we're in the hood, yeah, maybe that might be okay. But in my experiences, providing folks with a decent look in place is the best move. You're going to get paid back many times over with lower turnover costs. Not to mention, like this is Cleveland Heights. This is a B-class neighborhood. So um, I don't think that was the smartest move, but it doesn't deter me from thinking this is still a good deal based upon the numbers, though. Um, but truth be told, if I were you and I was only going to pull the trigger on one of these properties I've highlighted for you today, I do like 8331 Garfield Boulevard better. It's not to say I don't like this one. I just, you know, they're not exactly equal. I think the Garfield one is a little bit better. This one, number-wise, is going to pan out to a higher cash-on-cash cash return, but I, I think this property was just better taken care of. So keep that in mind. As far as the rents, they're pretty high. 900 for the upstairs. That's because it's got five beds, one bath. You might even be able to get that up to like 1,000. 
uh, on the next turnover if, you know, when we do it, we do it a lot nicer, right? We paint it all, you know, neutral color on the wall, but we paint the trim white, and then we expose the nice hardwoods and refinish those, you know, and make it look a lot nicer, right? Probably get up to 1000 Downstairs, that's that's quite a bit of rent for that downstairs, 825 and that's a 3-1. So currently right now we're bringing in 1725 a month or 20700 a year. The price point on this bad boy is only $94,000. As far as your numbers of that $17,25 you're bringing in, same thing as before, man. We got a, we got a budget for stuff, right? Repairs and maintenance, we're going to budget $1,032 a year. Vacancy and non-payment, we're going to budget another $1,032 a year. CapEx, we're going to budget another $1,032 a year. As far as those taxes, they're $440 a month. Insurance should be $80 a month to insure this as well. Again, click the show notes below if you'd like my company to go ahead and quote out an insurance uh, policy on this particular property or anybody else watching this who's got rental properties anywhere in the United States of America. Just fill in your information there, and we'll get you a quote. We'll see if you can beat your premium. We probably can. Water and sewer. 150 a month we're going to estimate lawn care just like the other property 44 bucks a month on average pm fees 172 a month so monthly expenses on average that we're budgeting for $1144 the noi should pencil out to an average of 581 for the month or 6966 for the year now <clears throat> if everything went well uh, and you purchased the Garfield property, right? You only spent $20,000, which means you got $35,000 left. You can go ahead and buy both of these bad boys. Doing this one with the mortgage, you'd only need to spend $23,500. That'd be a mortgage amount of $70,500 after you paid off your teeny mortgage at three fifty-seven dollars a month. There's going to be 4,284 a year that you're spending, not a lot. After all that, you got 224 a month in free cash flow coming in per month or 2,682 per year, which does pencil out to an 11.41% cash on cash return or a 7.3 cap. Now, I understand the Garfield property uh had a higher um or I had a lower cash on cash return, but I, I did like that property better. I think you should buy both. I think they're both good deals, but if you're only going to pick one, I do like the Garfield one better. One of the reasons I, I don't like this particular property is, A, we've seen the hints right from the units that the, the current owner, right, he's tried to fix things as cheaply as possible. That's just what we can see. So there's other stuff. You know, it's just a clue, right, for the type of owner that we're dealing with here. I'm guesstimating that uh, if he took the cheap route on the paint, he probably took the cheap route on a lot of other stuff. However, he's got a professional management company in there now. So what you want to do is if you're going to have him do repairs, you're going to want that management company. We're going to want to ask that management company to do the repairs and hire licensed contractors because the particular property has a gigantic point of sale inspection report, which I've got for you guys on the screen. This thing is huge. Now, according to the agent, they are currently working on these repairs, and it is negotiable what happens with the point of sale. So in my opinion, I think the smartest move, if you're to buy this, would be, of course, to make a contingent on a home inspection. Of course, make a contingent on your financing. And then we want to offer them full price. We want to come in and be like, hey, 94000 no problem. We will pay 94000 but you got to clear off this big old POS. And you need to have the management company hire licensed contractors and provide us with receipts. On top of that, more due diligence. You're going to ensure that the work is being done because the city has to go back and they have to reinspect all those repairs. So if they try to take the cheap route out, the city should likely catch that. So that's just more protection for you. And then you don't have to worry about any of this stuff because, I mean, this is like page after page after page of just knick-knack stuff here, knick-knack stuff there. And I, I have this in a PDF if you'd like it. Uh, send an email to sales at holtonwise.com and we'll get you the PDF of this uh, POS inspection report for you to review. Now, the city put an escrow estimate of, where is it? It's on the last page. This thing keeps going. Keeps on going. 
The city put an escrow estimate of $24,000 on this, but just based on how big it is, man, you know, I, I think this could easily get up into like the $35,000, $40,000 range. So you don't want to mess with getting in uh, to doing all those repairs. That's not what you're interested in. So let's use the fact that they said they're starting on their repairs and it's negotiable what happens with all them and they have access to a property management company that has access to licensed general contractors let's use all that to their your advantage let's have you come in with a full priced offer but you ask them to clear off that point of sale inspection report if they balked at providing you a completely clear point of sale you know that's just something, that's a bridge we're going to have to cross when we get there. We'll have to see what they're offering. Maybe there's a few items that they don't want to handle, and maybe we'll have to work that into the price. Or, of course, you have the opportunity to walk at any point in time because, you know, your original plan was to only spend your 55000 If you were to purchase 8331 Garfield, you're going to spend 20000 in cash. If you were to purchase this one, you're going to spend 23000 in cash. That leaves you with approximately $10,000 left over. So maybe if for whatever reason they're balking at uh, providing a completely clear POS, you got about $10,000 of cash to work with. So maybe we can have you pick up some of those issues. But again, that's going to be something we're going to have to cross when we get there. But if you're able to put that deal together, you have a ton of opportunity here to bring in a huge amount of rent. Yeah, I think the building is, is in kind of crummy condition, but it's not often that you find a Cleveland Heights duplex that has eight bedrooms. That's going to allow you the opportunity to really increase your rent over the long period of your ownership. So, Dan, if you want to buy one or both of these properties, simply send my team an email sales at holtonwise.com we'll be able to represent you we can write the offer for you we will negotiate these point of sale repairs all that stuff on your behalf we'll really make sure that you get the best deal possible on each of these deals now you also have the opportunity if you want you could just reach out to the listing agents and you can write your offer uh, through them as well just so you know they also work for the seller so bear that in mind and uh, you know I've been doing this a little while I sold uh, quite a bit of real estate and I understand the rental game here in the Cleveland market more than anybody and uh, you know I come from a very unique perspective of being an investor and a broker at the same time so I really think you're going to want to utilize my team's services on the negotiations of both of these deals because they're not necessarily uh, just super clean and wrapped up in a bow right now you know to really get you some value some extreme value here we got to, you know, work with these point of sales and see what we can negotiate. So that is something my team deals with on a daily basis. Everyone else out there, uh, if you would like a personalized video like this, just go to HoltonWise.com, click on the property search tab. You got two ways you can buy properties from us. One is the investment properties for sales show. Just click that. Make sure you're subscribed to all of our content here on YouTube or through our mailing list, and we will email you video tours of properties that we are selling every day at 1 p.m. And then the second is you click on the MLS Search and Analysis Show, and we will take your criteria or a property you found from another source, and we will scour through the entire MLS and we will find you things that we believe will work good for you, your finances, your goals, and we will work exclusively for you. That's what you're watching me do right now. Or like I said, uh, if you have a property you're already interested in and you just want my take on it, I can make a video like that. You just send us the property and you'll pick one of the varying analysis products. That's everything I've got for you guys today. Do me a favor and smash that like button. If you haven't already, do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. Going to keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me. And then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied.
RentTech Direct provides you with an easy-to-use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With RentTech Direct, you'll also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and RentTech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video, just like this one, to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.